Hey guys, Brian from Filmatic AI, and today I'm gonna go through a full walkthrough how you can use Color Clone to emulate 35 millimeter film. Hey, just wanna let you know, since recording this video, we now have a free trial available, and also the actual footage I use, so check it out in the description and you could follow along. And we're gonna do a direct comparison with actual 35 millimeter film so you can see a one-to-one -one comparison on how close we can get. Now, Color Clone isn't meant to be a full film emulation plugin. It's really just about the color response, which is arguably the most difficult part. So we're gonna use the grain inhalation plugins built into DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you stick around to the end, we're gonna take it one more step and show how you can use depth mapping to also simulate a depth of field of Super 35. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and all I've done is just set up the timeline where we have iPhone on the left and film on the right. So again, we're going to go one to one, the same exact shot or as close as I could get. First up, we have this sort of sunset feel. So we'll apply color clone to the iPhone, which is this right here. And then we'll just drop it in. Our source camera is iPhone. Our light spectrum, 5600 Kelvin, because this was shot with daylight spectrum. And our target, again, we're going to go Kodak 250D Cineon Log, right? So this is a log to log transform from Apple Log to Cineon Log. But let's actually view the film how it should be because um, it should be viewed in actually a 709. So we're going to do a Cineon Log to 709 translation and there we go. And we'll do the exact same with film. So now we're going to select Cineon Log to 709. It's slightly more magenta on the iPhone I would say and that's probably due to manufacturing tolerances even between certain models they can differ in terms of their tint. With our fine tune we're going to add a little bit of green and then maybe, you know, maybe we could just warm it up a touch. The contrast is still a bit different with the iPhone and their dynamic range, but we're just gonna try to match the contrast in a similar fashion, you know, it's pretty contrasty. And I would say that is extremely close already, almost instantly. Let's actually take it another step. And like I said, color isn't the only thing that makes film film. To me, it's also its spatial characteristics like halation and grain that really add to the feel of it. Within DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna use the free plugins that are included. We're gonna use halation first and uh, I'll make a new node and add halation in it. And there we go. It's a little bit intense. And when I say halation, you can look at this glow around the edges. A lot of people overdo it with halation and you can see actually how subtle it really is, but it adds a nice soft glow to the image. We gotta reduce the spread. Actually, I'm gonna increase the gamma a little bit so I can see where it's really affecting and then, you know, tweak the spread a bit. Uh, I think that's okay. And then we'll bring down saturation because it's a little too red. And then now adjust the gamma to fine tune it. And before and after. Okay, so now let's add some film grain. And we'll add film grain to the node after because order of operations actually matters. So we don't want to add halation to grain, right? So we put grain at the end. And then we can see in this texture, you know, on here, you can see how the film moves. Oops. Right, and then we'll try to emulate that right here. I think we could actually go on a little less opacity and have it a little bit more noticeable, right? Before and after. And it might just be hard to see in YouTube because with the YouTube compression, grain is usually the first thing to go. So, I mean, I don't even know how long that took and really just two nodes to get there. Color clone, which took us, I would say 95% there. And then just one more node to add just contrast and exposure. Digital, you know, people argue how sharp it could be. So what I like to also do is add one more node right after, and then we could add a little bit of softness using radius. To me, the sweet spot is 0.52 with that softness, and it kind of takes that digital edge off, right? So here is before, and then here's after. It's very subtle, kind of in the overall image, it just adds this touch of softness that film has. All right, so let's do another scene. And so now this is our film clip, so we'll add color clone to it right there. And then this source of this is Kodak 250D, daylight spectrum. Our target is itself, and we just want to apply the 709 to itself, right? Pretty moody, you can already tell on the halation right here. And then we're gonna to try to emulate that one more time. And then now with color clone, I'm just gonna actually copy that node, except now my source is the Apple 15 Pro, and that's it. So you can see immediately, it's pretty magenta. Like I said, maybe my sensor on my particular iPhone is a little magenta. We're gonna just add this fine tune, just maybe about there, maybe cool it down just a touch. And then we'll do one more node just for contrast and exposure. 
I would say that's pretty close. So now let's tackle kind of the more spatial stuff. And I'm just going to go back to this node. I already kind of labeled these, so halation grain, and maybe I'll just call this softness. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... I'm just gonna remove these nodes. So it's really just those spatial, those three spatial nodes. And then I'll grab a still. And then with this, I'm just gonna append this to add those three nodes. Let's look at the halation a, a bit. And then we can kind of, we can kind of bring this strength up, right? So with this, we'll kind of emulate the same thing, except now we'll increase the saturation a bit because you know we wanna have it red and that's not too bad. Obviously the iPhone doesn't have the same dynamic range as film. It shows because we're lacking all the detail in the highlights, right? But that's kind of beside the point. If you can expose this properly, then you should be able to get a pretty convincing image still to be a little bit closer. Sure, we could add another node or actually maybe here we'll add another node and adjust the highlights. This gets you so much closer. And also these transformations are fully three dimensional and complex transformations that you actually cannot recreate in DaVinci Resolve. So let's do another scene, another different lighting scenario. This one, you know, similar as the last one, but I actually had a light off frame. Why don't I just copy and paste the no, the one right before it? You can argue about the aesthetic quality of the shot, but okay, let's just kind of increase the exposure and right there, right? And you know, with this one, we'll increase the exposure and that's it. You can actually see that, you know, we're getting a little bit of wackiness with this because that's from the halation, right? So what you can do is you could view isolated regions and I like to kind of adjust the threshold so it's not affecting those because you really just want it to affect kind of the edges. But again, that was pretty much instant and I copy and paste it exactly from the other shot, even though the lighting scenarios were actually different. And, you know, let's change the highlights just because we want to do it a little bit closer and right there. We can spend a little bit more time. Sure, I can tweak this, but I would say that's very close for how little time we really put into it. So next shot, this is a beautiful sunset. It was shot maybe 20 minutes apart. So, you know, the lighting and position is not exactly one-to-one, -one, but I want to still show you how close we can get. So we'll apply 709 to itself. This is the codex. Uh, this is the 250D, 709 right there, okay. And then now we'll just copy color clone over. I'm just gonna take directly from the previous node and now our source is 15 Pro. And then again, we'll just adjust the contrast and exposure. And I would say that's extremely close. But now let's add the spatial characteristics, the grain inhalation, we'll append this and there we go. Mm. I mean, the iPhone's a little bit more magenta, but aesthetically, I actually prefer it. But if we want it closer, we'll just adjust the fine tune to add a touch of green. The green's a little heavy in the shot. Realistically, since we have such a thick negative with this daylight, it would be less apparent, but you know. Now we'll keep moving on. I mean, I'm kind of blasting through these. This is 500T now. It's a different film stock and we're gonna see how color clone responds. So color clone, now our source, Kodak 500T, 3200, because it was shot with a 3200 Kelvin LED unit. And then our target is itself, 500T, and we're gonna apply its Sydney on 709. That looks great, a little bit green. You know, sometimes film doesn't actually look as good as people think. And now we'll just copy and paste that over, except now our source, Apple iPhone 15 Pro, We'll adjust the film so it's a little bit brighter. Uh, sure, whatever. And you know, why don't we bring down the green? Because I actually want to cool it down just a touch. There we go. That's it. And then we'll do the same. We'll just bring this up a touch, maybe a little too much. And then again, we'll kind of do those same exact corrections. Bring down the green a touch and then add a little coolness in. And maybe adjust the contrast. I'll append the spatial characteristics, the grain and halation. So right there. All right, so now I promise taking it one more step where we could actually mimic the depth of field now of 35 millimeter film. And I'll show you using the depth mapping tool within DaVinci Resolve after color clone, 
add one more node right here. And then this is gonna be our depth mapping built into DaVinci Resolve again. Just drag it in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna invert the depth map and then show the preview, right? We wanna adjust the map levels. So the way this works is that white will be all the stuff that you want to affect. So if you want to apply a blur to it, everything that's white will be blurred. Everything that's black will be sharp and in focus because in this case, we're doing depth of field simulation. So we're going to go isolation. Really, it's just kind of finessing it to the to where you want it to go. So we're going to actually just make this faster. So if I kind of finesse it to here, you can see, OK, this black part is not going to be affected by the effect that I put on it. And then anything in white will be affected. So we're going to adjust the far limit because we want it, you know, let's go for a, a dramatic shallow depth of field, right? So there, that's going to be even more out of focus, but you could see some of the white bleeding into the head. So what we're going to do again, target depth, we're going to kind of bring it back. We're going to soften it a little bit, you know, try to get a nice fall off with that. And um, that's not bad, right? So we're going to undo the preview. And now this is our depth map node. If I can type, the mic is actually kind of in the way. <laughs> so now if we affect the radius, which we could use the blur, it's really only affecting the white parts that I showed you, right? Obviously, we're not going to do it as intense. We're just going to reset that. And then, you know, we're just going to finesse it in just kind of right there. That's not too bad, right? If we want, we can make this foreground a little bit more out of focus, which, you know, we can, again, just bring the near limit closer to that to get a more dramatic out of focus effect. And then we'll add just the far limit right there. And there we go. So now you're getting a little bit more depth out of the iPhone. With its very small sensor, the depth of field is kind of an issue for it. I could spend a little bit more time and finesse and perfect it, but that's kind of all it really takes. So I hope you were able to take something away from this video and I just really wanted to demonstrate how powerful Color Clone really is and how it can transform your workflow. So if you like it, please check it out. Subscribe, leave in the comments any other content you'd like to see. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.